I think manufacturers have a sweet spot, a certain price range in which their products are really competitive. They may struggle at prices above or below, but within a particular market segment, certain manufacturers just seem to get everything right. It's the same with cars. If I had to buy a new family car and was limited to £30,000, it'd probably be a Ford Focus. It's a fun car to drive, and I was fortunate that in a 12-year career in the motor industry, I got to drive most things. VW may be a more coveted brand, and it's arguable that the Golf may be even slightly better put together, but I don't think that's actually true. It just fails to put a smile on my face the same way as driving the Focus. Give me 40 grand and my choice wouldn't be a Ford or a VW. I'd be opting for the Jaguar XF. I mean, just look at the thing. Doesn't it look gorgeous? It has great drivability, comfort, and a personality that those brands can't match. I know, my choices are very personal and yours may be different, but that's part of the fun of pursuing passions, comparing notes. And it's very similar with speakers. Q Acoustics makes some decent speakers from two to 5,000 pounds, but it's really below 1,000 pounds that they have a track record of excellence. The Q Acoustic 5020s that I have in for review retail for 599 pounds a pair. And if you're in the market for a pair of speakers anywhere near this price, you may well regret overlooking these. The Q Acoustics 5020s are available in satin black, satin white, Santos rosewood, and a home oak finish. The wood effect finishes may be a vinyl wrap, but I still think they're attractive speakers with their combination of gloss and matte black front baffle with rounded edges. Each speaker measures 284 by 180 by 293 millimeters or 11.2 by 7.1 by 11.5 inches. The weight is 7.0 kilograms or 15.4 pounds. The new 125 mm 5 inch midwoofer is the first Q Acoustics driver to ditch a central dust cap for a cone with a conical curvature, a shape that they believe improves bass dynamics. 25 mm 1 inch silk dome tweeter sits in a shallow waveguide for smoother integration with the midwoofer. It has several features that trickle down directly from the more expensive concept range. The 5020 has a rear flared port and one pair of good quality low profile binding posts that allow close to wall placement. I applaud Q Acoustics for opting for one decent pair as opposed to cheap bi wireable types. The introduction of a new cone geometry is a pretty big deal for Q Acoustics. You won't presently find it on any of their other speakers, although I do expect it to filter in across their entire portfolio over time. Even the top of the range concept series has drivers with traditionally shaped flared cones and centrally protruding dust caps. That type of design has its benefits, better controlling breakup modes higher up the driver's frequency range. However, it doesn't hold its rigidity lower down the frequency range as well as a pure conically shaped driver. Q Acoustics set upon a research and development mission to see if they could come up with something that could offer the best of both worlds. The project started by computer modeling a purely spherical cone driven by a large coupler known as the anchor model shown in figure one. Once the geometry and the material properties of the cone coupler, spider, and voice call were programmed in, the model could achieve reasonable alignment between simulated results and actual measurements for the anchor model. Q Acoustics could then go on to simulate other cone profiles with confidence. Eventually, they came upon a cone profile which produced good simulated results. This they termed the two radius profile shown in figure two. You can see that the coupler is smaller and that the cone profile no longer represents a segment from a sphere. This is the first model for which tooling was done and actual drive units built, but during the process, a total of 16 sample drivers were built. Each time, the measurements were fed back in to a fine element analysis model to improve prediction accuracy. That's just a mechanism for predicting the physical properties of the drive unit. The final drive unit, shown here in figure three, was named continuous curve cone. Sounds cool, but it's just a fancy mathematical term 
for any curve with unbroken lines. The eagle-eyed of you will observe that there are some subtle differences between it and the original tooled up design in figure two. The whole point of doing this was to come up with a design that kept its shape at low frequencies and didn't have nasty breakup modes at high frequencies. Q-Acoustics claims that this new design achieves this. Other innovations include increasing the voice call from a typical 25 mm diameter to a strangely unspecified size, but they claim power handling has gone up by 50%, using a fiberglass former to eliminate eddy currents and a pure Nomex spider for low damping. The tweeter, like the one found in the concept range, is hermetically sealed. In plain English, that means it's airtight, so won't be affected by internal pressures from the cabinet. It's also mechanically isolated from the front baffle and has a compact, powerful neodymium magnet structure. No gel core sandwich construction for the cabinet at this price range. Instead, 18 mm MDF for the sides and back and 25 mm HDF for the front baffle. There's a butyl rubber layer between the front baffle and the acrylic trim to suppress some vibrations. Also, Q Acoustics point-to-point -point bracing ensures a stiff cabinet whilst minimal reduction in the internal volume. Finally, let's take a look at the crossover. It's great to see two air core inductors, good quality metallized polyester film capacitors and wire wound resistors. But I can also see an iron core inductor, the rectangular one, which has probably been selected due to requiring a high magnetic field strength. Also, I'm pretty certain that the blue cylinder is an electrolytic capacitor that will have a life cycle of about 20 years. Two weeks ago, I reviewed a 700 pound pair of speakers that took my breath away. Now, links in the description if you wanna see the full video, but my closing comments for the Monitor Audio Silver 50s went like this. The Monitor Audio Silver 50s have resolving abilities to hang with speakers at twice their price, but in their own market segment, they are class defining. Okay, so they're not gonna get you to question the laws of physics. These are small speakers that are limited in their base output and their dynamic capability. And I can understand why you might go for a competitor that has a fuller sounding mid-range. Just be aware that if you do, the likelihood is that you're trading quite a bit in terms of clarity. Okay, so here we have that speaker. If you're prepared to give up just a little bit of the clarity of the Silver 50s for a speaker that has greater bass punch, a fuller mid-range and slightly better dynamic ability. That's what you get with the Q Acoustic 5020s. Have I got egg on my face? Maybe, but the monitor audios remain extremely revealing speakers. I'm just surprised how little the 5020s give up in this regard whilst adding strengths of their own. The 5020s have enough bass punch to not have you immediately searching for a subwoofer the greater dynamic impact comes at the expense of bass definition, but it's still very good for this class, just not exemplary in comparison to the MA speakers. It's a similar story in the mid-range. You lose a little bit of that transient snappiness for a more full-bodied sound. It's a smoother presentation that fleshes out vocals and lead instruments better, but it's also softer. In other aspects, the sound quality is very similar to the Silver 50s, although I think marginally, the mid-range is a little bit more open on the 5020s with a little bit more space between performers, but there's hardly anything in it. The soundstage is wide, the imaging is good, the high frequency is extended and refined, offering a nice decay to notes. Before I move on to getting the best out of the 5020s, the Unify reference UBR62s are still here and a likely competitor at £749. They're much bigger speakers with more bass extension and weight but not as resolving as the Q Acoustic speakers. The Q Acoustic 5020s play okay at low levels, but around 50 dBs, they sound flat. You just need a little bit of current to wake up that mid woofer. At around 60 dBs and above, you're absolutely fine. I wound up with a fairly conventional setup with regards to towing in the speakers, so they're pointing just past my shoulders but I did have to work a little bit to get the bass response right, for which I had a couple of tricks up my sleeve. 
I moved the speakers away from the walls and I also raised the stands by 10 centimeters, that's four inches for my American friends. Both those things helped to tighten up the base, but did come at the expense of weight, so some experimentation is required. If you're gonna raise them, just make sure that the tweeters are still pointing at ear height, otherwise you're gonna lose some high frequency information. I think you can probably get away with placing the 5020s fairly close to walls if you use port plugs, but I didn't try that. So how do they get on with my reference amplifiers? My starting solution for the 5020s would be the IOTA VX SA3, a 50 watt per channel class AB amplifier sold directly for 449 pounds. It produced a dynamic, engaging sound that worked well with a wide genre of music. Switching to the 349 pound Cambridge Audio AXA35 was less balanced, shifting tonality to the warm, smooth side but the soundstage opened up a little bit further and it's a good choice for those of you looking for a relaxed presentation. The Audiolab 7000A at £1,099 is exactly where I'd go to achieve a balanced sound with the 5020s. It offered more detail, refinement and control than the less expensive amplifiers here. If any hint of brightness or aggression has you heading for the hills, then the Roxana Tessa would be a great choice. It's the same price as the 7000A or 500 pounds more if you want the built-in BlueOS streamer, the Roxanne traded some of the Audiolab's precision for a fuller sound. I noticed a further improvement in all aspects of sound quality when the 1,750 pound Exposure 2510 was called upon. In fact, many people looking to upgrade speakers further down the line will be delighted with that combination as an interim measure. The Q Acoustics 5020s are very well balanced speakers that veer tonally just slightly on the warm side with great resolution, good dynamics and a wide sound stage. They may not quite have the bass definition and transient attack of the other class leader in this market segment, but they give up very little whilst adding a fuller mid-range and greater bass weight. They also pair well with a wide variety of amplifiers and won't embarrass themselves as you upgrade electronics further down the line. In a highly competitive market segment with many alternatives, that makes them pretty special and puts them in a very select group. The Q Acoustic 5020s get an outstanding from this channel. The best pair of speakers, the best amplifier, or any other component simply doesn't exist. Satisfaction from this hobby comes as much from knowing what you're prepared to compromise as well as what you prioritize. So let's have that discussion in the comments section. Please let me know what do you prioritize in terms of performance from your system and what is it that you're prepared to let go of? I think that'd be quite interesting. All that remains for me to say is if you like what I'm doing with this channel, you wanna see it grow and you haven't done so already, please like, share, subscribe, hit the bell notification. Also check me out on Patreon. There's a couple of consultancy tiers there that you can access if you think I can help you on your audiophile journey. Also check out the ABA Club on Patreon there's fun ways in which you can interact with me and other Patreons, including video calls. But for today, for now, a British audiophile, signing off.